The maximum signals level discussed in a previous video shows bounds what is achieved at an interface. However, those bounds are based on a fixed source and adjustable load. In practice, however, there are circumstances in which the load and source, or both, can be adjusted to produce prescribed interface signal levels. Sometimes it is necessary to insert a circuit, shown here as an interface circuit, to achieve desired resu results between the source and the load. Here shown are general situations and some examples of resistive interface circuits. By its nature, the current can be observed or specified. And we note that the inserted circuit has two terminal pairs, one closest to the load and the other closest to the source. These terminal pairs are called ports. Hence, this is a two-port network. The port connected to the source is the input, and the port connected to the load is called the output. And the purpose of this two-port network is to make certain that the source and load interact in the proper way. Before we discuss and explain examples of different interface cases, you should recognize that we are now discussing a limited form in design, as contrasted with circuit analysis. And although we use circuit analysis tools in design, there are some important differences. Namely, a circuit analysis problem, a linear one, generally has a unique solution. However, a circuit design problem may have many solutions or even no solution. The maximum available signal levels found in an earlier video provide bounds that help us test for the existence of a solution. Generally, there will be several ways to meet the interface constraints and then it becomes necessary to evaluate the various alternatives using other factors such as cost, power consumption, and reliability. At this point in our study, resistors are the only elements we can use to design interface circuits. However, in future chapters, we will introduce other devices such as op-amps and capacitors and inductors in a design situation the design engineer must choose the resistance values in the proposed circuit. This decision is influenced by a host of practical considerations such as standard values because that will help minimize costs, standard values and tolerances, power ratings, temperature sensitivity, which deals with reliability, and fabrication methods. We will occasionally introduce some of these considerations into our design examples. Gaining a full understanding of these practical matters is not one of our objectives. Rather, our goal is simply to illustrate how different constraints can influence the design process. Let's consider the following interface design example. Here we're asked to select a load resistance RL such that the interface signals V and I where V is greater than or equal to 4 volts 
and that I is greater than or equal to 30 milliamps. In this problem, the source circuit is given and we are free to select the load. For a fixed source, the maximum signal levels available at the interface are Vmax is equal to simply the seven in voltage, which is equal to ten volts for this example. Imax is given as Vt over RT, which is equal to one hundred milliamps, where RT is equal to 100 ohms. So let's look at the first constraint where we have V greater than or equal to 4 volts. We're going to use the voltage divider since RT is in series with this RL. So V, the voltage across RL, is just simply RL all over 100 plus RL times 10 volts when you that is greater than 4 volts and then when you cross multiply that yields 10 RL greater than equal 400 plus 4 RL this yields Putting this for RL on the other side yields RL greater than or equal to 400. 10 minus 4 is 6. And then multiply by, oops, not multiply, but divide by 6, which is equal to 66.7 ohms. That's the first constraint. Now the other constraint is greater than I is greater than or equal to 30 milliamps. Well based on this we have 10 volts using Ohm's law divided by 100 plus RL greater than or equal to 0 0.03 amps since 30 milliamps is 0 0.03 3 amps. So this cross multiplying again that yields 10 greater than or equal to 3 plus 0 0.03 RL that yields RL less than or equal to 7 divided by 0 0.03 or 233 ohms. Using putting these two inequalities together we can say that RL should be between 233 ohms and greater than or equal to 66.7 However, to allow for parameter variations, we select RL to be 150 ohms, which happens to be the arithmetic midpoint of the allowable range and is also a standard value of resistance. So the answer, or one of the answers to this design, is simply that RL is 150 ohm which satisfies this set of inequalities.